This is a story about two kids from Louisiana and a California girl stuck on a remote Alaskan island with bears. The word adventure is typically used to describe an unusual and exciting, typically hazardous experience or activity. While I can't quantify the hazardous nature of this adventure, I can say this was an unusual and exciting trip. We tried to prepare ourselves for the experience. We asked a lot of questions and did some research about the place we were about to visit. A 1,500 square mile island that's home to more than 1,600 coastal brown bears. For reference, there are approximately a thousand grizzly bears in the entire lower 48 states of North America. 750 of those bears reside in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. So here we are at the Fortress of the Bears, the highest concentration of bears anywhere in the world. You'll just stay out as far as you can possibly get from the water. Baby, baby, yeah. no, you'll you're be okay. No, it's just... It's hard to describe the feeling of watching the float plane leave, especially knowing we'll be left to our own devices for the next eight hours with bears. One of the first pieces of advice we received was to not walk too close to the tree line. We were told you don't want to accidentally surprise a bear. Trust me when I say the walk to the observation area was quite exhilarating. Fortunately, the anxiety melted away as we rounded the corner. We quickly observed several bears casually grazing in the field. And we wasted no time setting up the gear. For the next hour, we watched in wonderment as the bears carried on like we weren't even there. At this point, we couldn't imagine things getting much better. Well, little did we know, things were about to change. Mm -hmm. We noticed the bears staring at the tree line with an unmistakable sense of caution. A large boar had entered the area. Mama Bear and her cubs were visibly unsettled. We speculated as to why they were so nervous. It could be any number of reasons. Either way, Mama Bear and her cubs made it a point to get as far away from that large male as possible. You can imagine our excitement when we realized she was bringing the family closer to us. She was understandably wary of us at first. Luckily, as we sat still, the mom and her cubs became increasingly more comfortable. Within a few minutes, the yearlings were back to their playful selves. However, now instead of observing them from afar, we had a front row seat. <laughs> we watched in wonderment as the bears wrestled around.
just a few hours into our adventure and we all agreed it couldn't possibly get any better than this. I'll save you the suspense. We repeated that phrase several more times throughout the day. It just can't get much better than this. One of the questions we asked is, what's the difference between a coastal brown bear and the grizzly bears we find over in Yellowstone? Well, it turns out that the difference is basically a matter of region and diet. The grizzly is a subspecies of brown bear that's typically found in the dense forests and alpine valleys. Both the grizzlies and the brown bear have a heavy vegetation diet. However, the coastal brown bears of Alaska grow nearly twice as big due to the seemingly unlimited supply of salmon. From the first week of July to the end of October, the various species of salmon take turns swimming upstream to spawn. The bears take full advantage of this yearly salmon run. As a result of this fatty diet, coastal brown bears can weigh as much as 1,500 pounds. Well, we're a little early for the salmon run. And surprisingly, these yearlings are still latching onto their mother for a mid-afternoon snack. <laughs> After all that excitement, looks like it's time to take a nap. Nap time for the bears meant we got to relax a little bit as well. You'd be surprised how much photographing bears can really take it out of you. The bear siesta gave us a little time to review our footage and stretch our legs a little bit. And Katie, well, Katie found a way to entertain herself for the next couple of hours. There's bears like right there. I know, they're awesome. I love them so much, but they're taking a nap right now, so I'm just gonna do some art till they wake up. Throughout the day, the bears continued to move about the area. We continued to take in the majesty of this place and frequently asked ourselves, can it get any better than this? Hours flew by and eventually we knew our time was far spent. We graciously packed up the gear and looked over our shoulders one last time to say goodbye. And as we hiked back to the pickup site through the mucky low tide, we reflected on our experience. Well, that's bear watching in Alaska. Uh, pretty lucky, I'd say. So many bears. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It's, what's the word, embarrassment of riches? It was so good, you're almost embarrassed to tell people. That's what it felt like. <laughs> Alaska. And just when we thought it was over, well, I'll let you enjoy this for yourself.
So yeah, two kids from Louisiana and a California girl out on an adventure. An unusual, exciting, and somewhat hazardous event that we will not soon forget. And like any responsible adventurers, we left the island as we found it, leaving nothing behind and taking with us the memories of this majestic place. Can it get any better than this? Well, four more days in Alaska. We shall see.